Welcome to today's Bible study for New Macedonia Baptist Church in Newport, Kentucky. I'm Pastor Randall Baker. I just have to ask you to bear with me some today. I've got a sinus infection. I may be coughing and sneezing something. I apologize beforehand. Uh, I would like to remind you that you can send any gift or offering that you would like to to P.O. Box 151, Alexandria, Kentucky 41001, and that will go to the church uh, and be used for uh, one of the missions or uh, uh, the running of the church. Would also like you uh, to pray for some folks. Continue to pray for uh, C.A. Griffith, Wilburn Turner, uh, Mike Harold, uh, Nancy Combs, Lucy Mays, Buddy Jean, Patty, and Mark Wilson. Uh, my granddaughter Candace, my sister Sylvia's grandson Dylan, and her ex-husband Jim. Uh, Tanya's brother John, and of course any all of the sick and in need, whoever they might be. Pam Hammonds has got an operation coming up. Pam Baker has been sick, and her uh, mother Millie has uh, a lot of problems with her joints. And, and uh, we just ask that you would continue to keep those folks in your prayer. El uh, Elsie's son Jason, uh, and of course all of the sick and in need, wherever they might be. All of our congregation and, and their uh, uh, family and the friends, I'm sure I've, I forgot plenty of them. And, uh, but God knows who they are. Just pray for each other and pray for our congregation and uh, all the members of it. Uh, pray for our church, the missionaries, the evangelists. And speaking of the missionaries, I uh, spoke with Raymond Villanova uh, yesterday. And uh, he said he's praying for the church and asked the church to pray for his, him and his church as well. His wife, uh, Sarah, uh, still battling an ear infection and had a doctor's appointment uh, yesterday. Uh, so continue to ask that God would, would bless them. Of course, the elderly uh, and uh, the widows, the widowers, uh, uh, that God would take care of them as well. And, uh, uh, you know, above all, the, the lost. Let's go ahead and go to uh, uh, prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for all you do for us, the many, many great and perfect gifts that you give us. Lord, we know that they all come down for you, and we thank you for them, Lord. We just thank you for answered prayers, Heavenly Father. Continue to bless me with us. Answer each one of those prayers that we ask, uh, requested for, Lord, in your own big will, big way and according to your perfect will, Lord, and we'll thank you for it. Bless up today's study on uh, Judges chapter 12. Be with us. Bless us. Uh, as we begin with it, Lord, give us some knowledge of it, if you will, and bless the reading of it, as you said you will, Lord, and we believe you when you say you'll do stuff, and we thank you for being a God that is honest, a God that is truth. We thank you for that, Lord. I ask you to continue to bless, forgive us of anything that, that puts us between us and our uh, prayers, Lord, that might hinder them. And we'll thank you for that, Lord. We know that you said uh, that if we confess our sins, that you will, or you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. And we thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for your mercy, Lord. We thank you for the understanding that you do give us, and you continue to bless, be with us, God, direct us, and give us that desire to read and to study your word, Lord. And again, we thank you for all things and ask all this in Jesus Christ's name. And amen. As I said, we were on uh, Judges chapter 12. We will begin in uh, uh, verse one, and uh, we had uh, we had talked uh, last week about uh, uh, Jeff Jephthah and uh, uh, how he had gotten gained a great victory uh, over the Ammonites uh, for Israel. He had been chosen judge, and uh, beginning in uh, Judges chapter uh, twelve, verse one, it says this. And the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and went northward and said unto Jephthah, Wherefore passest thou over to fight against the children of Amnon, and didst not call us to go with thee? We will burn thine house upon thee with fire. <coughs> so the men of Ephraim, they got an army together there, got an army of their men together, and they, they crossed over Jordan to confront Jephthah about not including them in the defeat of the Ammonites. They threatened to burn down uh, Jephthah's house with him inside. Now this was particularly insulting. He had just lost his daughter. He had just uh, he had just got her. Uh, it was the reason that she got killed his own daughter with fire uh, because of that of that stupid and uh, foolish vow that he had made. But as a little background for Gilead, uh, uh, Gilead uh, 
as we said, was a sub-tribe of Israel. They were, uh, uh, Gilead himself was a great-grandson of Joseph. The lineage went uh, Joseph, um, Manasseh, Maker, and then Gilead. And, and then, of course, we're talking about the lineage of him here. here. And as we know, Ephraim and Manasseh uh, were the two sons of Joseph. Uh, and Manasseh was the oldest, but Ephraim was chosen and blessed to be above his elder brother Manasseh by his grandfather Jacob while they were still in Egypt. So I suppose that the men of Ephraim felt like that Gilead uh, should have given them the glory uh, for the defeat over Amnon, that all things should have been done through them and, and by what they said, how they said it should be done. Verse 2 says, and Jephthah said unto them, I and my people were at great distress with the children of Amnon, and when I called you, ye delivered me not out of their hands. So the Ephraimites had done a similar thing to Gideon, if you remember a couple of uh, uh, chapters ago, about four chapters ago in, in chapter 8. They had went and complained to Gideon, saying that Gideon, Gideon had not called them to fight against the Midianites. Uh, but uh, Gideon had uh, diffused that situation, though. Uh, he kind of uh, stroked their egos a little bit by reminding them that he had allowed them and he had driven the two princes and allowed them to capture the two princes of Midian, Oreb and Zeb. Uh, and this did survive, suffice them at this time. But now Jetha, uh, he don't baby them with he don't baby with them as as Gideon did. He tells them that that Gideon was greatly oppressed uh, by Amnon and that they had called Ephraim. And that they had uh, called Ephraim, but that uh, they didn't come to help. Now, I've read a, a couple of different commentaries, and most of the people there believed uh, that, uh, that, uh, uh, that this wasn't true, that it was just something that uh, uh, Jephthah was saying uh, just to get, uh, you know, get something back at uh, Ephraim. Uh, because they say it's not recorded anywhere in the Bible, but I believe uh, that it kind of is recorded. Now, I, I don't think that Jephthah meant that he himself had called for help from them, but, uh, but the leaders of uh, Gilead had asked for help in a general kind of sense from Israel. When the, and they said this in, in Judges uh, 10, 18. Um, and the people and princes of Gilead said one to another, What man is he that will begin to fight? against the children of Amnon. So I think that they were just asking in a general way for somebody to come and help them. Nobody came. I think Jephthah was saying that Ephraim didn't answer that distress call that Gilead had put out. Verse 3 says, And when I saw that you delivered me not, I put my life in my hands and passed over against the children of Amnon, and the Lord delivered them into my hand. Wherefore then are you come up to, unto me this day to fight against me? So Jephthah said that uh, when he saw that no one came to help out, that he put his own life in danger, that he uh, put his own self in danger to lead the Gideonites to battle against the Ammonites. Uh, and he said the Lord had given him that victory over the Ammonites and that uh, uh, Ephraim had no right to complain to them because they had had that chance. Verses six, uh, 4 through 6, rather, says, Then Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim because they said, Ye Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites and among the Manassites. And the, and the Gideonites took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites, and it was so that when those Ephraimites which were escaped said, Let me go over, that the men of Gilead said unto them, Art thou an Ephraimite? If they said nay, then said they unto him, Say now, Shibabeth, Shibableth. And they said, Sibaleth. But they could not frame to pronounce it right. Then they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan. And there fell at that time of the Ephraimites forty and two thousand. <coughs> so the men of Ephraim, they didn't accept that explanation that Jeff, uh, Jeff uh, had given them, and more, more, furthermore, they insulted the Gideonites and uh, Jephthah, uh, Jephthah, saying that they were fugitives, that they were hiding away among the tribes of Manasseh on the east side of the Jordan River. Uh, Jephthah then called his army of Gideonites back together, and they fought against against their cousins, the Ephraimites. And they defeated and killed most of them at this time, but then some of the Ephraimites escaped. And so the Ephraimites that did, the Ephraimites that did try to escape, 
uh, back to that west side of the Jordan River were stopped by guards that Jephthah had placed there at the ford of the river where they could pass. And since they couldn't tell if the Ephraimites or, or, or some other Jewish man from just looking at them, they asked them to say a word. And that word was uh, shib, shibboleth. Shibboleth. I can't pronounce it either. But shibboleth. And two interesting things about that is this, that the word, number one, maybe not sure, but probably meant to cross a flooded river or stream. So it had some relevance there. And two, it contained an SH at the beginning of it. And the Ephraimites didn't use an SH sound. They said it as an S sound only. They were the only tribe that did so that they were, so it was a telltale sign that they were from Ephraim if they couldn't say Shibothleth. Uh, they said it as Shibboleth, not Shibboleth, but Sibboleth rather, because they couldn't make that SH sound, and therefore they were killed at the Jordan River. They weren't able to pass over the river, which is what the word means. So 42,000 Ephraimite men uh, were killed by uh, Jephthah and the Gibeonites at this time. The Gileadites, <coughs> pardon me, at this time. Verse 7 says, And Jephthah judged Israel six years, then died Jephthah the Gileadite, and was buried in one of the cities of Gilead. So Jephthah only judged Israel for six years, and then he died. Now it doesn't tell us if he was sick, doesn't tell us if he was injured, or, or maybe he just died of a broken heart, uh, knowing that he was the reason his daughter had died. Some of the earlier judges had judged for for much longer period of time. Uh, Othniel. Uh, judged for 40 years, and after him, Tola for 23, and then after him, Jair for 22 years. Now, we're never told how old Jephthah was when he started as a judge or when he died, so we're just not told that information. We just don't know. Verses 8 through 10 says, And after him, Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel. And he had 30 sons and 30 daughters whom he had sent abroad, and took in 30 daughters from abroad for his sons, and he judged Israel seven years. Then died Ibzan and was buried at Bethlehem. After him, Elon, a Zebulite, uh, judged Israel, and uh, he judged Israel 10 years. And Elon, the Zebulonite, died and was buried at Ajalon, a a Ajalon in the country of Zebulun. And after him, Abdon, the son of Hillel, a Periathonite, judged Israel. And he had 40 sons and 30 nephews and that rode on three score and 10 ass colts. And he judged Israel eight years. Well, I went a lot farther than I said I was going to go, but we'll go ahead and read the rest of it. And Abdon, the son of Hillel, uh, the, the Periathonite, died and was buried in Periathon, in the land of Ephraim, in the mount of the Amalekites. Now, I said I was only going to read seven, eight, uh, eight nine, and ten, but I went ahead and read the rest of it. But we'll go ahead and go over it all now. But uh, uh, after Jephthah died, a man named Isbson of uh, Bethlehem, judged Israel. He had 60 children, 30 sons, and uh, 30 daughters. And he sent them abroad. He sent his daughters abroad, and I, I don't think that he sent them out of Israel to find uh, a husband, but uh, the word abroad that they used there just meant severed or away from them. It probably meant that he sent them to, to different Jewish tribes to find suitable husbands. Now, he did a similar thing with his sons, except that he chose the women from abroad and brought them back to his sons. Now, I, I don't think there was anything against women there, but, but probably he didn't choose husbands for his daughter because the father was the one to choose the wife for his son. So he had to wait until a man, <coughs> pardon me, uh, a man's father had chosen one of his daughters for his, uh, uh, for, you know, their, their wife. He also only judged Israel for a short year. It was a short time. It was only seven years. He died then and was buried in his hometown of Bethlehem. The Bible says he was from Bethlehem. Now there were two Bethlehems in ancient Israel. Uh, one was in Judah, uh, and uh, Bethlehem, Judea, which the Bible talks about Jesus being from, and one was in the north of in Galilee. Uh, Ibsen was probably from the one in Galilee, as what I've heard, but the Bible doesn't really say uh, for sure, so we don't know that positively. And it doesn't appear as if any of his 30 sons uh, or son-in-laws judged after him. After Ibsen uh, 
then died, a man named Elon. Uh, he, uh, he then judged Israel. He was from Zebulun, and uh, he judged for a short time as well, only 10 years. And he then died, he was buried in Zebulun in a uh, city named Ajalon. Now, nothing else is mentioned about this island, uh, Elon here. But after Elon died, uh, verse 13 says uh, that Abdon judged Israel, and he judged for eight years. He was the son of a man named Hillel, and the Bible calls Abdon a Pirithonite. And Pirithon was a city in Ephraim on the border just between Ephraim and Manasseh, uh, on the west side of Jordan. And uh, he had 40 sons and 30 nephews, and like the judge Sheer in, in uh, uh, Judges 10, 35, who had 30 sons, he said that they rode on 30 ass colts, all 40 of uh, Absalom's sons, and all 30 of his nephews, all 70 of them, rode on asses. And, and you know, that usually showed a sign of wealth or prestige that they, that they did. They were probably uh, uh, kind of like uh, dignitaries or, or uh, the gentlemen uh, of the area. And I think, but I think that the most interesting thing here about um, uh, Abnon is that Abnon is uh, as a judge is that he is an Ephraimite, and uh, this is about Ephraim. He was it was just 23 years earlier that they had suffered a great defeat at the hands of Jephthah and the Gileadites. Uh, and what does it show? Of course, it shows that God's love and mercy for Israel. The last thing mentioned in Judges uh, chapter 12 is that. Abdon is buried in the city of Pirathon in uh, Ephraim in the Mount of the Amalekites. Now we aren't told anything else about the Mount of the Amalekites. It could have been a place where they had fought Amalek, uh, or maybe a place where Israel had taken this Mount uh, from the Amalekites, or possibly some of them even still live, live there. That is actually the uh, finish. It was a really short chapter, only 15 verses in there today, but. Uh, starting in verse uh, in chapter 13 rather for the next four uh, chapters uh, they'll relate the story of, of arguably one of the most famous and well-known judges and that was Samson so <clears throat> thanks for joining us today and uh, uh, continue to join us as we go into that uh, very interesting uh, study I think of, of Samson that it's going to be that he's quite a character Samson is like I said, thank you uh, for joining us today, and let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for this 12th chapter of Judges. We thank you for this whole book of Judges and the whole Old Testament, Lord. We thank you for the examples and, and samples that you set forth in there for us. Lord, thank you for the mercy that you showed Israel, Lord. It teaches us that you are merciful to us as well, Lord. And, and, and as they made mistakes and they asked for forgiveness, you forgave them, Lord. And we thank you for that. And we know that you can do that for us. Again, we ask you, Lord, that you would bless those prayer requests made earlier heavenly father continue to give us that desire to read and to study your word and give us some understanding of it if it be your will lord and we'll thank you for it we'll thank you for all the great and perfect gifts that you give us the many wonderful things you do for us lord and we'll give you all the glory all the praise and all the honor in jesus christ's name we do pray and amen